Thank you very much for the, your kind invitation, Rosie, and thank you all the team. And uh, thank you for being here and listening to me. Um, I'm very sorry to be late. <laughs> and um, it's like a very uh, kind of Brazilian thing that people expect we are late, but I'm normally not, l not late. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, choose, to, I choose this, uh, this word, Mutainai, and I will explain why. And maybe some of you already know this word. So who knows this word? Hey, right, ah, good, it's good. I am talking about something new for many of you, I'm happy. And um, so actually, I, I, in this presentation, I wanted to talk about how I do connect food, art, and sustainability. And I thought um, I would explain why I use food as a medium for my work being as an, uh, a book author or a chef or uh, an artist or a creator, why I work with food. And as we know, like here probably, um, the food is connected to many crises that we are experiencing at the moment, directly or indirectly. So like the um, extinction of animals, as for an instance, in my country, as for example, uh, the place uh, where I was born is left only 2% of the forest, the original forest. And this place has been replaced by sugarcane plantation. And uh, so within the forest, all the indigenous people, all the animals, the plants, and the culture, the indigenous culture that used to live there. So, um, we are talking about hunger, we are talking about um, immigration, right? The immigration crisis, because many people, uh, it's because the people are looking for food security, is one of the big reasons why we have like the, the migration crisis, or like the climate change, or environmental degradation, deforestation. So, as food has this big impact in our world and society, I thought it would be a good thing to use it uh, as, as a power tool for change. But um, actually, I, I wanted to, before we go into like my work, I wanted to start before why um, I personally decided like doing something about it. So I am, we are going like back into my childhood. And uh, I was, as I was uh, born and raised in Brazil. And in Brazil, it's like, um, as we would have two words, um, where a few have a lot, and a lot of people have a little or nothing. And, um, it's like a kind of these two words would be separated. But in my, in my life, I, I was lucky to be born as a daughter of an artist. And a, uh, my mom is Japanese, born in Brazilian, but um, in Brazil, but she's, um, she was a teacher for art and literature. And she always cared about people. And as for example, she would like, instead of uh, sending me to play with uh, the kids of my school, I would play with um, the daughter of Dona Antonia, Adriana in the favela. Or she would always tell me, uh, if we have uh, enough to live, which we should share with others. And it was not about money, it was about giving something like our my time and as a kid i perceived that as as for example i thought um the garbage men they do a beautiful work right they clean our cities and so i was really excited about their work and they, he, they were my heroes with like this big car with lights so i would go every day at 6 p.m when they came and sing for them or I would collect all the cats in the streets and uh, take care of them until we had 13 cats and my mom said, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> and so Dizzy, you see, like uh, we were like a really happy, I was like um, m my father's friend, they were 
al always wearing colorful clothes and they had an idea and they would realize this idea without being afraid of anything. And it happened when I was 11 years old. My father died and within him, uh, we lost all our security, like uh, financial security. So my mom would have to sell the artworks and sell everything. We, from one day to the other, um, we had like nothing but rice on our table. And it was a very, very hard time for my mom. And I have to say, we were still very happy because sometimes I'm afraid to say something that sounds like very tragic. And then, you know, like a, what I want, I, I decided including this in my presentation because I think uh, when we talk about our personal stories, it's like the message is much stronger. It's not like then you see me and then you say, ah, she did this, this and this, and she's doing that. And then, you know, without the context why I'm, I'm doing this and why I really care about something, right? And um, yeah, so I, I decided to help my mom because she could not work anymore and she, ha she got a breakdown. So I started working and um, I will say, talk about come back here. Sorry, I, my presentation is, I wanted to change a little bit. And because I wanted to come back here when I started working with uh, 11 years old to help my mom. And with 13, I had my first job outside home. I was working at the radio station as assistant of production. And there you see me working at the TV. So I work as a producer assistant and I took all kinds of jobs. I had like, a, um, I work as a model and I was very ashamed to say I, I, I did that. This is also something new that I included on my presentation because I don't think I should be um, like, because in Brazil we say, okay, like a, if you are a woman is already hard, then if you are pretty, and then if your model is like sort of, she she's not able to do something. And, and I was really like, uh, I was able to do many things. I'm, I must say, I'm not perfect in anything, but I can do many things. And because I got all these jobs, you know, I had like the opportunity to work in the, as a model, you, like now I'm standing here in the front of you, kind of nervous, <laughs> but, I'm still, I know, you know, like everything, how, how it works, how it's like, why, how I, I should like stay, stand here. So that helped me somehow. And everything, every single thing I did, even if it was like doing crazy performances with artists uh, putting lipsticks on the bells or <laughs> like really crazy funny stuff, I still, um, yeah, I think we should be proud of what we have done and, and then see the positive things and that help it like me somehow to do what I'm doing. And, um, and then I wanted to tell you how I, the food sort of like came very, very strong in my life. When I was 19 years old, I opened my own restaurant with partners. And I didn't know what I was doing actually, like very much. <laughs> I, we just like, my partner had an idea and then we found investors and uh, the restaurant was a success from the first day. We had like uh, every day open uh, 365 days in a year for lunch and dinner. And uh, I was the only Japanese part in this Japanese restaurant for non-Japanese people. So my work was to translate Japanese culture for the guests. And as a director of marketing and communication, I, I sort of what I did was to bring my word, um, like the art, I'm sorry, to, to the restaurant. So I did the, uh, installations and I did exhibitions. I, I told the, the chef, ah, um, we are doing a, like a floating exhibition. I want to serve floating dishes. And then he said, like, you were crazy. You don't know what you, you're saying. And I said, well, um, I got an amazing opportunity. I got like a 
olive oil importer and he wants to make our bottle of olive oil with our logo and the recipe in the back. And he said, uh, Japanese food with, um, with olive oil, it's uh, no, no way. And, or Japanese vegetarian. And he said, uh, no, that's impossible. And so I thought um, in my, like, I'm very naive. And I thought, okay, I go to the university and I train as a chef de cuisine. So I'm going to learn his language. And I would tell him, this is possible, like doing like this and like that. But as you might imagine, in the gastronomic world, it's like really, really hard for women. And it's like when you're young, you're not respected. And then when even if I had my diploma, in, I formed it in the best university, which is uh, like um, connected to Paul Bocuse in France, he said, you have no experience. <laughs> So I could not like do it and I had to always hire other chefs that would have problems in the restaurant to do something. So I, um, after nine years doing the restaurant, which then became three restaurants and a fashion label, which I designed, I, in one of like the interviews I gave, um, someone asked me, why are you doing this? What, what is important for you? And, and actually, I, I, I thought then that actually everything that my parents taught me, it was not part of my life anymore. Because like uh, in Brazil, when you have a business, it's sort of like a being criminal because you have to make a, a different, um, you cannot declare everything or like the partners have other ideas or like the partners, they, they want to earn more money and you don't, don't want to share with everybody. There's like no like democracy or no like a sort of going, growing together. Like these models like of the, like that we live now, uh, it's very hard when it goes to business like, but here in Germany, I know like one person that is really inspired and really, can do something like a good product, run the business, do something good and give back. And so this was when I came to, to Germany, when I didn't find any answer in Brazil. So I decided to look inside myself and I'm half Japanese and I don't know anything about my culture. I can't speak Japanese because in Brazil it was forbidden to speak Japanese after the Second World War. So my mom was stoned on the streets because she was the enemy. And um, my, I could not speak with my grandmother. She could only speak Japanese and was forbidden. We could not wear Japanese clothes. So that's why I'm always wearing like this, <laughs> this clothes to honor, you know, like uh, these people that like, that are my ancestors that suffered so much to be in a land where it was their land, but they were not welcome there. So I discovered this word motainai, which is a Buddhist Japanese word and refers to reduce, reuse, recycle. But it's also a way to say thank you. So I, I was really curious about this word. I was like really thinking, how can a word mean so much? And it's be in, in so holistic, like uh, this word uh, Japanese use before eating, itadakimasu. It's also a Buddhist word. And it's like saying thank you to every single person that made part, that was part of the process of bringing the food in front of you. But not only the people, but the nature, the water, and like all the resources. And so it's it's like a beautiful thought. and and. You know, even if I, I, I didn't, I, I was like in Brazil and when you were, you grow up thinking there's something wrong with you, you're like half the enemy or something. Um, and sort of my mom suffered a lot of, uh, with this, right? So it was for me a wonderful surprise to discover that within me, there's like a culture that is beautiful even if there is like uh, all the bad stories together, right? So I came to Germany 
And I started researching this word, Motainai, which brought me to make these two books um, uh, against food waste. The first book is focused on bread because I founded this sponsor, um, Joachim Weckmann, is this person that I told you before that is doing good breads with local ingredients, organic. He pays like a fair, uh, every, you know, people are happy to work with, for him and work with him. And he helps like five different nonprofit organizations, um, non-government organizations um, around the world. And it's like a really like inspiring to see that a business can can work and can operate. You can make money and you can sort of like help the others and help the planet. So this is the sponsor of my first book and he has like this uh, bread factory. And um, and this is the second book which is focused on this uh, exploring this uh, this concept of motainai and. I wanted in, in this book to show like how beautiful or how like how a, like a leftovers or what we consider waste can uh, be totally different shaped and then become a new meaning or like a new life, such as these pills that we normally throw away. <coughs> and um, so this, I, I just put like some kind of ex examples to um, like, a, yeah, to, to give you an idea how we, we wanted to actually stage how, how like food actually, it's, it's even if it's, um, it, you know, it's like uh, not beautiful for, for some, but it can look tasty for, for others or um, how, still if you have uh, a little you can do a lot and this kind of ideas and or i don't know if you know about a, another concept buddhist concept call it kintsuki it's uh, when an object is broken they stick together with gold yeah so this is like um, to show that actually this object has much more value than before and it's like not something that you it is not a waste it is still useful and these are like concepts that i wanted to bring into into the food into these leftovers uh, ideas such as like um, you know when you have a little uh, rice leftovers sort of what what can you do with that or you have one piece of uh, of cake and then you have three guests, so what you can do with that? So you can break apart, put some uh, juice on it, and then you make like uh, pops, these cake pops, right? And then everybody can get some bite. And you, you know, and you don't need to throw away this piece of bread because it's like just too little or because it's not enough. Like this uh, kind of ideas. And um, I also like it, thoughts like exploring within my work um, how you can give meaning for the food and how you can make people think about what they are eating and so I created um, the whole experience in, uh, around the the food so let's say on this picture is like a, a piece of earth it's a soil pie and I think maybe some of you play it in the like the sandbox when you're a kid with like making cakes so i did that and i really enjoy it and i enjoyed eating this i still remember the taste of the sand and my mom was not happy with that because i i got some worms and she didn't like but i did like wonderful experiences like eating the like the plants and trying tasting Cafes, for example, this coffee bean, it's like, you know, I, and I thought that when some, uh, like a company asked me to uh, create an experience about the future, and I started thinking, how is the future of food, you know, like there would be 
one possibility, we are too busy, we don't have time to eat, so we get supplements from, from the pharmacy. And the second is like we are really sick and then, you know, doctors need to come and feed us. Or, or we eat the food of the astronauts, you know, they eat like quinoas, for example. And then I started researching about all the possibilities for our food in the future. And one of the possibilities is that we come back to the roots, that we do like uh, there's an uh, anthropologue in, um, in Brazil, uh, Antonio Viveiros de Castro, and he says, uh, he talks about uh, the Indianization. It, it does no, I don't know if it makes sense in English, but it's like being like indigenous people again. So how do they uh, did before? They had, um, you know, they have to source their food from the forest, from lo like locally. And of course, they would not destroy the forest to take the food. And then there's nothing, there's n nothing that he, they can leave. So um, these agroforest models and like eating uh, organic, local, seasonal, you know. So this is sort of like a really like um, something that could could really like be the future. And it's like something that people actually like this uh, kind of cuisine that I'm researching in the Buddhist Japanese uh, philosophy is more kind of a philosophy call it Shojin Hyori. It's also like uh, 3000 years old. And it's also talking about all these trains, you know, like this, like everybody's talking about the trains, uh, like the food trains. And also I, I participated at a study f about the food trains and it's actually everything written there and the indigenous people knew before. So I created this dish to sort of like when people came expecting, you know, the future very fancy and white and, you know, robots serving. And so I, I got like farmers serving this, this kind of things I like to think and I like to make, to bring people into, uh, you know, out of their comfort zone to think about. If it's like positive and some people like when I, I did this experience, there are some people that think like oh, it's really cool. And there are some people that think it's like, oh, I was expecting something else, you know. <laughs> so um, I think the important thing is that people are thinking about like the. So I also incorporate like on, on my work, like if, if I do an artwork or if I do the book or if I do like uh, whatever I'm doing, I'm always considering all these things that are present in our like culture heritage. <laughs> the fermentation and other preservation methods. And this is also something that we are losing. And, um, and I was like recently uh, in in Greece because I'm I'm preparing myself to participate at a, at a uh, conference. It's about food as a cultural heritage. I'm I'm talking about about that, and I I was really like uh, shocked to see uh, you know all these pillars of our civilization and uh, the fundamentals, the essential fundamentals of our th that we know here, right? Like confronted with all these crises are very, very um, apparent. You can see like um, the, like everything is broken. You can see like uh, uh, many people on the streets, like the refugee crisis, and you can see like, yeah. And I was like, that really like brings to my, to my mind. And then even if it's like hard, I feel like um, there's a motivation in there because like with the foods and the in we can change so much because we eat like three times a day so it's like three times chance <laughs> to change <laughs> to change things that we don't want to see or to experience that we w don't want in our planet so this is like um like sort of somehow motivating for me because i see people Anyone can can do it, can cook, and can make better decisions, and and it's like again not not connected to the money because many people think I'm oh, but Taina, uh, you're talking about eating organic. It's much more expensive, and but 
but no i mean like if you cook yourself and if you're like my if you're mindful with your in ingredients with your food it's not more expensive it's just like a myth and i can't say because i'm doing that i'm trying this and i had as for example i'm um, talking about food waste is not only talking about this piece of tomato but also the the whole thing right the packaging so my mom said to me some years ago you want to fight against this so you do it yourself we don't throw away anything <laughs> and suddenly our home uh, was like full of garbage just like just like this you know just because you you want to eat some sort of like you want to eat rice i i am like half japanese i need to eat rice and then rice comes in the packaging you want to eat tofu that comes in the packaging and everything it's like coming in a plastic packaging right and if you want to uh, eat dried fruits or dried something it's also on the packaging and this is um, this is like a um, something that it's when you do it yourself you are like more conscious about the challenges that like that to, that the gen, like in general what what can like people are, are going to experience and also come back to me and say ah, Taina, but all these ideas they don't work because and i want them th that they, they work so i'm like i'm the scientist and i'm using myself as the the i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so this is me like uh, uh, trying to dry some stuff because in in japan they dry everything and also there's this belief of you know the energy of the sun uh, it's also like something that increase and there's like also this spirit spiritual aspect that um, that i really enjoy yeah so talking about the beer regional and seasonal this is i don't know if you know about this model uh, solidarity agriculture yes so some of you <laughs> shake your head so it's like amazing so you know it's possible to eat organic and to support like small farmers and also like to give something back to the nature because like um, we know that what monoculture and um, the genetic modified seeds what they what they did to to us right so when you do your you're part of a community that is supporting the farmer and the farmer can produce on demand for this community locally organically and of course season uh, so you avoid a lot of lot of uh, a lot of problems or you reduce tremendously the impact that we have in our planet because sort of you don't have the transportation co2 you don't have the packaging you don't have the food waste because everything that you produce you're going to eat so what is more expensive um in the in the process of uh, producing food the people working right so this model um uh, is like um, works because the community goes to the fields and help the farmer twice in a w in a year and or sometimes more sometimes less it depends in, depends on the solidarity agriculture model but this one that i'm part of it's like this and if you cannot afford this uh, this time you pay the fee but the I the idea of going to the field is genius i think because it's also a very very big part of educating people educating people on the matter of the value of the food once you know from where the seeds come from you know the forts how much sun how much everything it demands to produce your food it, there's a different value and when kids learn and they have fun you know they have contact with the nature that's also something that increase um the like potentially um the like the impact in many different crises because when you practice a solidarity you are part of a total you're you you are working together with the planet with the sun with the rain 
it's not only you about you like what we have learned we, what normally we learn in our in, in our society or in the schools that you have to be the best and you have to make no, like the notes for the exams and so on it's like it's about the the whole thing you know then everybody and everybody is going to share what is there so i think this is also like very important in the educational aspect <clears throat> yeah and then um i don't know if i mentioned it before that when i so i came to germany i looked the, for the answers just making like sort of i look i was looking for the answers what to do with my life what would be meaningful and then i discovered the motainai i discovered shojin hyori i've been i went to japan and i wanted to learn more but then i i was not accepted in uh, any temple because this kind of like philosophy is only um taught in temples and um so one temple accepted me actually and they said okay you have to learn japanese you have to be able to stay here one year and you need um to be able to do all the work cleaning having the cold shower and everything so i accepted the challenge and i moved to dusseldorf where here in germany the biggest uh, japanese community lives but then i got pregnant and it was not possible anymore to to go to to follow this dream and um but out of like um many challenges that i have i um, decided to move into berlin and um i got a job offer in a very exciting restaurant like a vegetarian gourmet restaurant and then um when i moved here they said no I, we don't have the job for you and <laughs> yeah my life is full of these stories and it was like sort of um in berlin in winter one meter snow on the streets and no one i didn't i i i know i knew just only one person and uh and out of this worst case scenario i i realized that the only chance i had to survive would be to do my own projects so i started i started doing my own ideas and it created this event called share your food which is an event that i um, i ask it i ask people to share what they believe could make our world a better place and with the answers i print a magazine an art magazine and um and then i i got to know my first sponsor my first event like the npr radio was there and like i got many people coming and they really enjoyed i got an, an invitation uh, to perform these at the guggenheim lab and it was like just happening like but but it still was kind of something difficult for some people to understand when i i put food into an art context and i said uh food art sustainability you know like that's genius because food and art both universal languages that can promote positive change and you know to talk about sustainability matters and but people would say no food is not art and um they would be very like close and also the the chefs they said oh, what we are doing is art <laughs> so it was um difficult uh, to start so i um, i opened in, i said okay i'm going to open my own space and i opened in the gallery and a uh, contemporary art gallery with, with a kitchen integrated and there i started exploring these um different ideas um working with scientists with environmentalists with like a uh, students giving them a place to show their their ideas and this uh, as for example was um one installation i did um about the plastic in the oceans and it was like the, this was the setup and i had like one wave like a f- uh, that was really like a very very immersive um um experience and then i had like a underwater sounds created by an artist called it Jasmine Gouffon and it w- this was one of the most visited exhibitions i had and then kids would come and say what is this and i then i would just say like just come inside and just feel it and then just 
And they would say like, yeah, I feel I'm in the ocean and I know like how this plastic world. And I said, yes, and it, this is like the like uh, the jellyfish and this is exactly the vision the um, the animals like turtles for example they eat um uh, jellyfishes so they see this and they go and to to eat it and then they die and then they were like oh, okay yes and then they came some came back and with like the whole uh, school um, class or the others came and said like you know I am a now vegetarian <laughs> I don't eat fish anymore or yeah it was wonderful to see like how powerful it was like because they did this, this experience and this is was something I was looking for because you know here in Germany I work in three different schools um, like public schools, I, I work in the suburbs, I work even in France in suburbs with, with kids, even if I don't speak French, <laughs> it's like a miracle. But you know, I think when you want, it's like, uh, it's like if you have the motivation, you know, like people are going to understand and things, things happen. And then they, you know, in France, this project as for example, the kids, they so that there are problematic kids, they cannot keep attention. And they, with me, they meditate, they do everything. <laughs> and I, I, I really feel like, uh, you know, these, these challenges that we live now, like uh, they, sometimes we, we just like uh, have uh, so many obstacles, right? We, we think like, ah, okay, uh, how you can you can make like kids, as for example from Germany, that we live in this superficial world. It's like a bubble, right? You have everything all the time. They they don't have empathy, like for the others. They don't see the suffering of the others, and like some of them, right? And I'm not talking uh, general, but. Even my son, sometimes I, I, I wonder and I think like, oh, I have to bring him to Brazil and I have to show him. I had only one, one toy, one Barbie <laughs> that I got from, my, from a friend of my mom, you know, like, and, and he has so many toys and he has so, and sometimes I, I wonder how, how can I, raise my son in, in like fighting against all these the consume and everything that I am like a, this unbalanced uh, word right and I cannot bring my son to Brazil and I cannot make him experience or all the kids right if the, all the kids would go and see the world outside this bubble that would be amazing that would be like something because actually what I think is that the change, the place where like the change is made, it sounds a bit kitschy, but it is in this place in that that happens our our deep emotions. I don't know. Some people call it hard, right? <laughs> and this is the place where when people are like touched there, they are able to do anything or everything. And this is what happened there in this installation. So I saw I could bring through the art the people in the ocean of plastic. I could bring them there and I could make them feel how it is. <clears throat> and they and some people would change, would feel touch it. And so I thought this is something powerful. And as I worked a lot with kids and I work with nutrition, sugar came into my life and I wanted to make myself free of sugar and my son too. So I've been researching about how to, how to make it how, without sugar. And I got like um, some ideas that um, I tried also to, through my experience with art and, and with the kids, I, I just like explore these like, and, um, these recipes with them, and I discovered that actually it is possible. Sometimes we needed to be a bit more insistent because, like, um, I have some groups of kids that they say, ah, "I eat donuts every day, and look, I'm healthy, I'm good, I'm fine," and 
and then you, you know like what you're talking about the uh, sugar causes depression and um, uh, liver disease um, obesity caries and everything uh, no I'm I don't have anything I'm fine and and so it's sometimes hard because we, we created like a lot of barriers like a and like sort of boxes and and I think it's hard to make people to take take sometimes people out of the boxes so I I'm really focusing in in like telling people these all these stories then showing that actually anyone can do it and it's easy and uh, it can look like a really like this and really like involving um the kids into the process and thinking like more and more that as a global citizens we in the times that we are living we don't have time anymore to um, do something that is not mindful and not meaningful and i think um when i talk about my work i think people can see you know like i came here without speaking german and english I, I work in France with kids that don't speak French and um, and even if I, I'm like sometimes like, um, you know, like um, I have like uh, my limitations, I am trying, you know, and it's not like about like just being like Greta, but just, you know, doing something. <laughs> and um, and I think like this a notion of that at the time is it's too fast. It's like it's happening in a different way that we are normally used to 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 perceive it. Uh, it happened with my son because like the future when he was born, it was not anymore like there. You know, the future is like the future. It's now, and it's like just by my side every day. And so I, I, I think this, this makes us like perceive the word and the urgency of doing something in a different way. So if, even if you don't have your own kids, working with kids gives you or opens these uh, perspectives. And so I, create, I did a chapter of my second book with my son with his uh, favorite recipes. And I wanted to say that I'm looking for a publisher because maybe you have different nationalities and I wanted to publish the book in uh, other languages because it's just in German and it's um, very limited from like what people can understand. <coughs> and this is uh, sort of some kind of like a works that I'm doing. So I, I, ha I work with different um, inst uh, institutions or organizations universities, I'm guest teacher. I don't have a diploma as a teacher, but I'm guest teacher at the uh, Slow Food University in Italy, at the Design uh, University in Netherlands. And um, and here I am in Berlin, I work at, uh, with UDK and Weissensee Kunsthochschule. And um, I'm also volunteering, working uh, a lot with uh, public schools. And I work with, um, this is like me working with Greenpeace and uh, we created uh, an like action for, to protect Amazonas. And it was really, really beautiful and, and powerful. Or there, uh, it's in the Guggenheim lab. Um, there's like with the Market Halle 9 and the Georgi Kaiser, the, the owner of Bio Company, which is like also a great support of my work. And um, and this is a project Time Bank Time Food from Julieta Aranda and Anton Vidoc that went to document in Castle. So I, I I like the idea of working with different people, like from artists and uh, environmentalists or uh, politicians, or uh, because I think it's really hard to for us now to find answers. It's not like anymore, you know, like that old times that you went like eight years walking and then you find your master and then you ask your master and he gives you all the answers. So, <laughs> yeah, so this is like also some kind of like just uh, even if my English is broken, my German is broken, I keep talking and talking about like uh, what I have experienced and I think this is also helps like can can help and I have good
positive feedbacks that um, you know that people felt more sort of like yeah I I feel like empowered I, I feel like I can I can do something or I will start I uh, I have groups uh, in Brazil that they started doing uh, some workshops that they started doing some uh, similar activities or yeah. And uh, yeah, these are the things that I create with uh, with students from all um, kind of different backgrounds. And this is the group of, in the France from uh, Red Star Football Club that the, from the suburbs that we don't speak the same language, but somehow we communicate. And this is like sort of this kind of love communication. I don't know. I don't know how it happens. I cannot explain everything. But yeah. This uh, and this is uh, one special project I created, um, because I I felt sort of like uh, if I really want to affect change, I have to create a community, and we have to be many, and I wanted to create a platform to bring all these people together, and I sort of invited some people here in Berlin and uh, galleries and in these projects like Princess Ningarten, Market Halle Nine farmers and and then um, I made an open call because I wanted to make it democratic and then we were 100 people from all over the world and people would write to me and say uh, I we know you don't have money but we are coming we are applying for grants and we are coming we are joining you and then we had um, 60 events 40 locations and 10,000 visitors the first year and then I have been traveling. Uh, we did Paris two times. The Paris last time we had a, a location that received like 5,000 people a day over the weekend. And then um, I realized that numbers are nothing because like from all these cool hipsters, uh, many people, they didn't really understand Ten, what I'm, what we are trying to do, or then some people got really drunk and and they didn't care about the artwork. So we had all the volunteers and me protecting the works uh, for many many hours. So I nowadays I think uh, it's better to to work with ten motivated students and not like having these numbers that only works for sponsoring <laughs> and. Um, so the Food Art Week is like, uh, yeah, it's growing in every direction. So we got like to work with Federation Square in Melbourne. So we got our movies in this big screen uh, for the whole month last year in September in Mexico City, in Oaxaca. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's, very, it's, it's very polemic and very disruptive. Uh, project because sort of as for example the images you see we are talking about sugar and we are not saying like uh, putting like a, a candy and saying hey you know come to our event we're talking about sugar but we are just like uh, extinction and then there's like uh, you know uh, consumers can change or uh, sugar is so addictive as uh, cocaine or or we are saying like uh, the plastic word if you uh, want to uh, reduce plastic, stop consuming it, or the climate change and fast food, or um, you know the the luxury that we live, having all this packaging, all this lifestyle, uh, and then all around us is like sort of destroy it, right? Dry. So, you know, is this the price uh, that that we want, or we are? Like there, you see the donuts, they have like a different disease that you can develop if you consume too much sugar. And um, so you can pick yours. And talking about the antibiotics in water, because this was really shocking. I had a conversation with the president of Berliner Wasserbetrieb, the water company, and uh, it was really shocking, you know, and this is something that if we don't change the way we consume food, they, they cannot help us out, you know. They have already 60 um, scientists trying to clean up the water, but that's not possible. So we uh, we needed to understand 
that we have to do something and we have this power to do something and we cannot wait for politicians or uh, uh, I don't know someone to say you know to find the, the this the answer I think we have to do ourselves and we can do that with our food three times a day so you can choose doing this like one time in a week <laughs> or and then more and more you know it doesn't need to be like suddenly and, and getting crazy to, to change everything, right? Even if I, I do think if some of us would do that, would be great. So, um, so here I just put some artworks that I <coughs> have been uh, doing. So sort of like this globe, is, uh, it was a globe with the amount of, of bread that each of us threw away a year because what we eat or don't eat influences the whole world. So I'm invited people to save the bread and then do something with the bread or um, I have this uh, luxury um, the, the word is is luxu is luxury and lishu there's the two words uh, in in one or talking about the, the meat waste which is the impact is much larger than any other and this is uh, it was a work I did in collaboration with the garbage uh, management company in Berlin, the Berliner Stadt Reinigung, which is also a great supporter. And um, yeah, or like animals disappearing, and this is made uh, with food, or uh, this was another work I did for Spiegel magazine. They invited me to answer some questions with art. So there's like the globe with the, with the food and all the, some thoughts about, on that. Yeah, this is the bread, the bread installation, or this other uh, installation was about the, um, the distance that the food needs to travel to reach us here. And it, I did it in the, on the streets, and I always get a lot of problems because <laughs> I was blocking. <laughs> Yeah, and the food that the food art week also like there was like a, we did Bologna food art week and the the Pope was about to come, and our flyers were designed by Jorge Chamorro, and uh, and it was like the Pope with a burger on the face, <laughs> and uh, we spread this all these. Uh, it was not aware. No? I would just we spread it all these and this, uh, posters and everything. And then one day I got groups of people coming with the flyer. What do you have against the Pope? And the police came, came and they, they wanted to arrest me because they, they thought I was planning to throw burgers on the face of the Pope. <laughs> it was, it, it's always like very adventures, <laughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, so plastic in, in packaging. in. Yeah, I serve the the water menu inside it. We, maybe we can do here. So we do can do in, in Berlin again. Um, I serve like fermented water, vaporized water, frozen water, water in different consistences. Like even like fire and water, it's also possible. <laughs> fire, fire, water, yeah. And I, I wish this could be always on somewhere that people, because it's so powerful. And I see, I, I did also in, uh, in Austria, this installation and in Paris, and it was like really, li like people can understand without that I say a word. And I think this is something that we have, we should consider because one day we all here, we will not be here anymore. So what we are living. So it's good that there's like, a, you know, like there would be things that we can like all together live here, like as a good f footprint. Yeah, and then I, my work brought me to do like this was last year. I said, you know, like, uh, because many people said, oh, okay, Taina, you're doing this and then you do, it's like, a, you know, there's the elite that likes art and want to see art and then the food and then you have these food experiences. And, and there's sort of like a, a, a lab because sort of like a, I work with the public schools, I am volunteering and I'm working, dedicating my time. I, I do like regularly with a friend, I call it uh, Laura Ximena Guerra. Uh, we do cooking for homeless people because although we have institutions here in Berlin taking care 
so of them uh, they there are many people that cannot go to the institution to the place and uh, also i think we think that it's important to give warmth and and show them they are, they are not invisible we we are seeing them you know and we care about them and um so we 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 have been doing this just going cooking and going out there and, and giving food and love and clothes warm clothes so if one of you wants to do it together uh, one day we um yeah it's a wonderful experience and this came also like after for me after this installation was even more sort of i could understand even more the word of homeless people because i was occupying a public space in the front of um, UDK, is the most uh, important in art university here, <coughs> maybe. <laughs> and um, um, and so I, I did these green houses that were uh, shining green, so green, green houses. And they were, um, an ed each of them, they had like an educational aspect. So I was trying to explain sort of this cycle of uh, the sustainability cycle, uh, the how the our food or how the waste the food waste comes back to us or it's involved in, in in the water so i had the it's called it water conservation project one of the houses i did with the berlin uh stadtreinigung and uh, so this house is just imagine it's uh, 11 meters 50 and so it's huge house and half of it was filled with plastic bottles that are consumed in Berlin every five minutes. Wow. So, uh, yeah, it's like crazy. So this, uh, the, the whole place would be full of plastic bottles. It's just like in just one hour, the whole, the whole square. And it's like scary. And when you see that, and it was like also for me very important that the Berliner Stadtreinigung did a statement because many people, they said, ah, I'm already recycling, <laughs> you know, and I put my garbage there in the right place and it's done. And it's not, you know, and they cannot like, uh, the place is going to stay there. And this was uh, there, everything written, explain it, that this plastic is going to be microplastic in 4, uh, 450 years and uh, and it will never go away and it will come back to us and it goes to the to water. This is also a big problem that the, the water, all the water companies from all the planet have to, have to solve, right? The microplastic. So it's, it's causing also infertility in men as well, in men and women, like not only pesticides as many of us know, but also like micro, the plastic. So this is sort of like alarming. And it was, it was like a sort of people enjoyed to come to see. And I, I got like a hundred uh, students coming every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, and so I was talking, making like the tour, explaining every house, and they left a message. Like the 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 last one was like what we potentially could do, some sort of bringing up some ideas and making us like also part of uh, of this, you know, and not only sort of like uh, uh, observing the the word going down. <laughs> So I, I always like this idea that we are involved in the change, that we have the chance to, to change something, and that this is also uh, positive. That's also like, because without the hope, we are, we are lost. So we need to have this hope and, uh, in, in, in feel uh, this empathy and feel we are together. So then I, I, this was like about the last house. And this is like the the seeds because as I as I said I work with or, some organic farmers, and I see like the urgency to talk about the seeds, and so this is the topic of the food art week this year as well, and I have been exploring. I'm doing like a different formats. I did at KV um, here in Berlin a dinner where, as for example, just was a dinner that people got there it was like a you know the plate was a seed growing. And then I we we had a performative dinner, so people came and gave the bill for the people, for the guests. And on the bill was written, um, if we don't preserve the seeds, they would disappear. And within them, life on earth, this is the price we will all have to pay. And so sort of like this is um, sort of like a, the way <laughs> 
the way I thought that maybe could make people think about because if you say like ah Alice bit good it's all fine you know we are going to make it and then it's sort of like a, it's too comfortable and um, and I, I don't know I feel just like we have urgent to do something and so I, I'm trying and I try to do something like that but also you know working with kids you cannot work like that so I, I it's a totally different approach when I, I have to work with kids and also when you don't have the language so we, we are on the time yeah <clears throat> yeah so I'm, I'm trying sort of like creating installations or creating activities and the next one here in Berlin is going to be on the Earth Day and 22nd of, of April and I'm again occupying a public space and I'm, I'm, I'm there with my students. I have a very motivated uh, students from the public school call it uh, Fried, uh, Friedensburg uh, Oberschule. And we are doing like sort of, uh, we are building up a mobile kitchen and we are, so this is here, yeah, me today, like just. <laughs> um, yeah, this is all, kind of like things that I'm exploring. And I'm excited to be here today because I, you were coming from a different background than me. And I thought that maybe, yeah, it would be interesting to figure out if we can somehow come together and, and, and do something and create something and find other languages and like new languages that could promote positive change in different different ways i just think it's worth trying as i said even working as a model brought me something <laughs> um yeah and this is like sort of my motivation that i think um it's worth that we get together to to do something to preserve our planet and we can do this by cooking cooking our future together Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, wow. <laughs> I thought that I'm working hard. How can you do manage all the things together? You are a very, very active person since the age of uh, 13. So I mm. hope, first of all, that this is already an inspiration, especially for the students that are thinking that they are uh, uh, studying the hard. <laughs> um, just for you to see that it's only the fraction of the day and, uh, and uh, I hope that um, um, you have really uh, brought uh, some uh, in good inspiration for me definitely uh, but this is not a kunst <laughs> for them I hope so as well uh, I also hope that um, the students have got inspired in order to, to be more active and to see how many options there are to do something also when you are not an artist like you because uh, not everyone is a talented artist we are all like born creative we are our nature is creative and we are all potentially artists i it is not like my idea like many people thought about that including uh, the big joseph boys <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also to see that the uh, art can be, you can be part of the art, you know, there are human installations, there are uh, performance, uh, like, uh, so to say, human performances that are mm -hmm. coming to an installation with the purpose to raise awareness or, you know, to show the, um, uh, so I hope that uh, they will also keep in touch, we will definitely keep in touch and to see uh, how uh, can uh, we work together uh, as a citizen, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's one project I'm doing, you know, like uh, in I when I went to I've been to Kathmandu, I was living in a temple and I was like uh, crying so hard every day. And my mom said, "Come back, pack your stuff. You're having a breakdown." And it's really like um, shocking the reality, how uh, you know you see like this luxury business, like people pay fifty thousand dollars to climb the Himalaya, just the permission. And then they hire like people to carry their stuff. They, they leave all the garbage there, you know, in the place and then to make the selfie. And um, 
and and then you look around uh, people wearing masks you know because the uh, the air is so polluted and there is no garbage management no beans on this the whole city and there's like uh, kids you know beautiful people like uh, without shoes without clothes like just like uh, like the it's the water so it's so dirty you know in all this beautiful culture and then you go to the sacred places and you see hindus buddhists all together no fights it's like and then you see then you listen to the stories because i was in a buddhist uh, temple then talking like uh, the the tibetans how they are suffering you know like and and then I got like sort of, okay, I, I can't do anything. It's like just the problem is much larger than in Brazil because like in Brazil you have the concentrated in the favelas, it is two words that I said, but there it's like everything. And I, so I, I came back and then after recovering, I, I got an idea. I found like I started there I, I, to meet like a lot of people to, because 90% of the NGOs, they don't work. I met a guy that is like a very popular on Instagram and everything, like a jet setter. And the guy, it, he got like five million uh, dollars donation after the earthquake, you know, and he, he still don't know what to do with the money. <laughs> and so I just got like so disappointed and so frustrated and and i said okay I, I started to go into ngos to meet people and, uh, and i found a man that started to build up a clinic in the himalayas with wood and, and stones from the forest without any money with his friends and i, I posted on my instagram it's like the test gram if you if you want to have a look but like look like uh, these ants you know carrying this like 10 times bigger stuff going going there and in the the clinic is almost done and i decided now because when i started helping to to build up this clinic it was just like the Not first stones yeah, okay. so i'm helping and you know the way i found to, to help him was to convince doctors here to place a donation box. So people donate one euro, you know, and that's nothing for them. And it's going, it's making a big difference. So the clinic is like, it's there already, kind of like a almost set, it's missing like the beds and the stuff inside the equipment. But you know, like sort of just like a simple ideas because like UNICEF, they, they are good, but they are they have means you know they have like a marketing budget they can help like finding people to give money they have they are even in the easy jet or Ryanair I don't know and but this guy he cannot help himself and you know and I I'm not doing any effort I'm here and the donation box is getting filled <laughs> so you know it's like not that I'm doing much and I don't I don't I, I say, OK, I'm, I'm helping, but I'm not really helping. I mean, I ha I'm helping. I just but I, I'm the taking the money. The first yeah. help is that you are aware of that. Most of the people are living in a bubble, like you say, but you are exploring. You are going there. You are going. You are feeling the suffering of the other people. You got a break, you know, breakdown from this. Not every person in life will take his life and go to the temple or go to this. So <laughs> first of all, you know, do not underestimate because yeah. it doesn't come uh, like that. I have a few ideas of my uh, my own, my postration, because you told, you spoke about the waste and, you know, the, the unbalanced, you know, <coughs> and the money, the 50,000 or the 5 million or, or the people who do, uh, do not have... So I have a little bit frustration about the UN and the spending of the money, not effectively and unnecessarily. Sorry, this is not uh, for the cameras, maybe. <laughs> uh, but we are, uh, we are here and uh, open, and everyone can say whatever uh, he wants and whatever uh, she feels, and uh, I have a big mouth. So uh, <laughs> if you, uh, I, I have a dream. I have a dream to make like a, a some kind of a, a, a how do you call it a mob flag installation whatever you know to come to give it in their face you know because they are like hypocritically trying to help so like many things but at the end of the day nothing happens really mm -hmm. ex except of like spending like five hundred million dollars a year only on flights to come to a meeting in Geneva which is the most expensive 
city already in the world because all the UN is there. Spending each person has yeah. 100 assistants with salaries, with food, car diem, and so on and so on. Uh, I remember that it, it was talked a little bit when we had the Syrian crisis, and they talked there, and they had another talk over there, and all the talks, and the, the people said that only 27 million euros was spent on flights in order to talk the one talk o o on this, and it was so frustrating for me. Uh, so last, uh, you know, not speaking about the the jet, the oil, the everything, uh, everything unsustainable, so to say. Yeah. And we are actually, at the end of the day, we are sponsoring that from the taxes, from our sources that are coming to the, to the countries and so on and so on. And if we could take this money in a direct way, like we want to, and invest it in things that we are really important and not to do all the way on the mail that is burning all the sources and at the end nothing is happened, so I have a dream to do this kind of a, a, you know, installation, not for the whole world, first of all, for, for them to see, maybe to have some shame and, and see in the world that people will see that and they will not have a choice. And believe me, we will put this box and every person that working, is working there will put, he can even put 10 euros a day, not one euro a day, you know? But even one euro a day and all of them, and you know, we start with that, we can come also to, a lot of help, so, but this is my dream that I wanted to share. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sure, that, nice. I'm sure that every one of us, if we think about it and so on, we can come with an idea and, uh, and dreams, you know? But what we need to realize, and the, you are the inspiration uh, for that, that it can be not only a dream, you know? Because if you are active, you know, I cannot accept, we cannot accept that everyone will be as active as Tanya, but if we come together and Taina is here and you have a small idea and everyone, you know, uh, a lot of cultural diplomacy is, is about working together, yeah. sharing bread of ideas as well, not only of food, not, on, not only sharing spaces like we are doing uh, and so on and so on, sharing platform, but also, you know, and, uh, there is the, the point of the soup of stones, you know, the, like the village that they didn't have any food and one, smart old guy came and said, okay, we are going to cook a stone soup for all the village. So everyone told him, what can we do? Well, we cannot eat a soup from a stone uh, 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 and nothing will happen. And he started to boil water and put some stones. And then one came from one uh, a house. Okay, I have one carrot. Let's put the one carrot inside the soup. It will make it a little bit better. And then another one came, okay, I have a zucchini one or one petrozilia a little bit. And all together, at the end of the day, they could cook a soup that could feed, you know, the 1,000 uh, people. So uh, like that, we can also share a little bit of ideas and a little bit, and at the end, uh, make a small change. Maybe it will be a small change at one time. Don't be, uh, you know, uh, desperate. Oh, nothing will change. It will be a small change and so on, because many small changes we saw that in the world, also in the last year, brought revolutions already. Mm -hmm. So just for you to know that we can, we can be part of revolution from this place or another, or part of a change. So uh, before I'm, uh, if you have, any, have any questions to Taina. So I want to uh, thank you very much for the big inspiration and really I hope that it's only a start of uh, some connections and uh, doing some things together. Yes. So thank you very much for thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you.